This is the first in a series of videos about sweater styles and how they are constructed. Whether you are new to knitting sweaters or a seasoned sweater knitter who is tired of the same old way of knitting sweaters, this Technique Tuesday video series is for you. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, tap or mouse over the video playback area of the screen and use the chapter titles to guide you to the section of the video where you'd like to jump. Use the gear icon at the bottom of the playback screen to slow down or increase the video playback speed. Sweaters are fundamentally just three tubes of fabric below the underarms that join together between the underarm and neck to form one larger tube. While the shaping of the sleeves and body is pretty straightforward and simple, the shaping between the underarm and neck is more complex. It's the way the three tubes merge into the single tube or diverge out of the single tube that defines what the sweater style is. The five sweater styles I'll be covering in this series are drop shoulder, modified drop shoulder, set in sleeve, raglan, and yoke. These are not by any means the only styles of sweaters out there, but they do tend to be the most common. As each sweater style is covered in its own video, you will see the variety of ways any given sweater style can be constructed. I'll use small scale sample sweaters that fit this little mannequin, as well as full size sweaters that I've knit for myself and others to illustrate the styles and construction methods. So let's get a brief overview of the five basic sweater styles. If we look at a two-dimensional schematic of a drop shoulder sweater, you can see that the body is very rectangular. There is no underarm shaping at all. The body is completely rectangular and this represents the neck for the front. And the sleeves are basically trapezoidal in shape. There's a cuff here and then they just gradually get bigger and then it's straight across at the top. So this is a style, it's a very simple style. It's one that you will often see in sweaters for babies. Here you can see that the body is just very rectangular and then the sleeves come directly out from it. For the drop shoulder sweater, because the body is rectangular, the armholes tend to be hanging several inches over the end of the shoulder. So you'll see that little shoulder seam will appear part way down the arm. This sweater style is similar to the drop shoulder sweater, but it, there are a couple of differences. Uh, first, the body narrows uh, between the underarm and the shoulder. So if you were knitting in this direction from the bottom up, you'd have some stitches that would be bound off. And that would put the sleeve seam more in line with the actual shoulder. It might be coming over the edge of the shoulder a little bit, but it would be more in line with it. The sleeve, instead of being completely trapezoidal shaped, there is a straight portion at the very top before the bind off. This straight portion here aligns with this. So this part is sewn together. So it's still a drop shoulder construction, but it is modified a bit. In this example, once again, I have no shoulder shaping, but oftentimes you will see shoulder shaping. So it, it could look more like this right here um, instead, but the sleeve would still look the same. It would still fit into the underarm the same way. This is an example of a, an adult size sweater that is worked in a, with a drop shoulder construction. So you can see right here, this is part of the side and that it is narrower right here. And then the sleeve fits into that opening right here. And for this sweater, I did do some shoulder shaping up at the top to give it a little bit of an angle. The next style of sweater is called a set in sleeve. So it's yet a further modification of this type of sweater. So again, you have some stitches that are bound off at the underarm, but then you typically have some decreases for a while that continue to bring in that upper body portion. And so the intent with this style of sweater is that the seam line would be in line with your actual shoulders. Again, you're going to have 
shoulder shaping here. The sleeve is shaped differently for this style of sweater. Uh, if you ever have done sewing, garment sewing with woven fabrics, this more closely resembles that sort of a sleeve cap. And the idea is that this kind of curved area right here fits all along in this arc, into, into this opening here. And this portion right here curves around the upper part of the arm. Because that seam line is right in line with your shoulder, then this curved sleeve cat cups around the upper part of your shoulder here. So I'm showing this as with kind of a curved cap, but there are situations where the cap is more simply shaped than that. It might be more trapezoidally shaped like this, be a little bit more angular. This is a sweater I knit recently from a vintage 1940s pattern. And you'll see that you have this underarm um, in the body, the underarm is, is being decreased for a while and then it goes straight up while the sleeve uh, matches that shaping right there for a while and then continues to be shaped. So this sweater style is called a raglan. And for this type of setup, you have a sleeve that on the surface looks very similar to this trapezoidal satin sleeve. The difference is that the body is also getting narrower at the same time. So the seam line is an angled line that comes in toward the body. So all of four pieces of the sweater are, are being narrowed in this kind of trapezoidal shape, and then they meet at the top to form the neck. This is a little sweater that was knit with raglan shaping. This sweater was, the body was knit in the round and the sleeves were knit in the round and then they were joined together and then the shaping was done as the sweater was worked back and forth in order to accommodate the neck opening. The yoke sweater is constructed in a similar way as the raglan uh, for this portion between the underarm and the neck. The difference being that rather than having the shaping, whether they're increases or decreases, all occurring on a diagonal line that would be visible, instead the decreases or increases are distributed in the round and they are not necessarily distributed in the same way that they are in a raglan. A raglan is typically every, say every two rounds, you'd have uh, those increases or decreases where in a yoke sweater, they might be less frequently done, but more of them done in that particular round. And that, and that is dependent on what the stitch pattern design is. It's a pretty typical example of the kind of yoke sweaters you will see in contemporary designs. This one was started at the neck and worked top down and has seamless construction. The, the sleeves were separated off from the body and they were all knit in the round. Another option uh, in contemporary yoke sweaters is to knit the tubes uh, separately up to the armhole and then shape it up toward the neck. In this video, I gave a brief overview of the five basic sweater styles. In the next video of this series, I'll go deeply into drop shoulder construction using small scale samples as well as full size sweaters. I'll provide resources for finding patterns, adapting patterns, as well as how to get started designing your own sweaters. If you have any questions about sweater styles and construction methods, please leave those down in the comments below. I'll also leave a link to my Ravelry Group's discussion thread for this video down in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.